David Ladd is sleeping. David what the hell Ladd. Was that? David Ladd sleeps tonight like the lion sleeps tonight. I got the uh, YouTube. Right, I don't so know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, so it's looking like we, uh, we've we got the green light here. So we're going to be going live. There is uh, Brizza. Who is Brizza? Hello, Brizza. Do you hear us? Can you copy? Oh, I guess that works. He's from Australia. Oh, hey, how are you? Do you got a copy on us? Okay. Well, we're, we're, we are, it's a work in progress here as we... <laughs> as we figure out our technology all right well we're live we are on the internet we are here for a very special episode of coco talk after dark where we're going to look and see what's inside paul's box we're all here for that we understand paul's got a big box and there's lots of stuff inside it so we're going to see what that's all about so how about we go ahead and cue the intro music am i sharing with you guys i'm not sharing sound with you guys so i might as well share sound right now for the full effect here. All right, so we are going to cue the intro music for a special episode of Coco Talk After Dark. And here we go. Coco Talk After Dark. Coco Talk After Dark. That's right. We're here for a very special episode of Coco Talk After Dark. We're going to play What's Inside Paul's Box, or a.k.a. Unboxing the Beast. So here we go. We're going to do it live, and we're here. I got a chat message from Breeza, and finally, Breeza is in the house. Breeza, how are you? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. And how are oh, you? That's good. Oh, I'm good. Thanks, Frank. I haven't used this thing in a long time. I didn't think it'd even work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, what brought you? What brought you here tonight? Well, I've been meaning to catch up with you guys in this chat thing for ages, but I've never had a chance. Now I finally did. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're glad to have you. Are you familiar with Nick Morota by any chance? Yeah, I've been talking to Nick for donkey's years. Oh, no, really? No, that's different, Nick. Oh, you're thinking about Nick Morentes. Nick Morentes, I do know. Yeah, Nick Morentes. Yeah, Nick Morota is the guy on the show. He's he's kind of our inspiration. He's our muse. Oh, he's oh, he's the guy who um, you know, gets us gets us going, gets me up in the oh, morning. What's he do? What's he do? <laughs> I call him every morning. I make sure. You know, <laughs> Tim Franklin's here in the live chat on the panel. We've got all kinds of people here, but we've got. Nick Marota, Nick Marota, Nick Marota. Name so nice, you got to say it thrice. How nice. are you, Nick? Thrice, nice. I like that. <laughs> Love the word thrice. <laughs> We've got Brian Weasler with us today. How are you, Brian? Very good. Hello. Excellent, excellent. We've got Brizza. Is it Brizza or Brizza? How do we pronounce your name there? Brizza. Brizza. Yeah, like, not Brizza. Brizza. Like Brizza. All right, we got Mikey with yeah, us again. It's actually Brian, but everyone calls me Brian for some reason. Okay, fair enough. We'll we'll stick with that. So you're you're an Aussie, I take it, right? Yep, sure am. Deep All right. Aussie, like Nicholas Morantis. There you go. Good eye to you. Good eye. Good eye. Good eye. <laughs> All right. So we also have from sunny California, Mr. Michael Furman. Mikey, Mikey, he likes it. Is here. We've got from uh, an unknown planet. David Ladd is with us. Hello, David. All right, everybody just ignore me tonight. That's fine. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, David. We've got David's uh, cousin, Grant Leedy's with us. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got I the out. I don't know if anybody would claim being my cousin. <laughs> the optimizer, the MC10, Mr. James Diffendaffer, is here with wearing his spiffy fedora hat. Greetings. That's been rendered a full 30% faster than before, so that's always a good thing. We have the creator of Boomerang Mania, Rob Inman, is with us this evening. Hello, Rob. How are you? Hello, Stevie. Uh, hello, hello. Wow, that uh, sounds a little threatening. Yeah. I really? Don't know, um, 
Chet has been Latinx. with us. Chet's been with us for a little bit. He's muted. I hope you're there, Chet. If you can hear us, we're saying hi to you. If you want to say hi back to the people at home, feel free to do that. Now's your chance. Chet Simpson's with us. Hey, everybody. Yeah, I'm just sitting here working on some code, so listen to you guys. All right. Good. Well, thanks for being here. Keep keep working on that code. We need, we need more code. And then last but not least, the man of the hour, the reason why we are all here today, the guy with the big box full of good things, Paul Ooh. Fiscarelli is here. Hey guys, how's it going? Going good, going good. So I know I know you're still getting situated there, Paul, but when you're ready, we, we got to hear the story of the big acquisition, and then obviously we want to see as much as we can see, and if you're not ready, we'll continue to f uh, filibuster until you are, so... Uh, yeah, uh, just a couple more minutes. All right, you guys got anything to filibuster about while Polly's getting ready? This isn't going to be one of those uh, um, Al Capone's vault situations, is it? <laughs> Al Capone's. So, so <laughs> Rivera and Al Capone's vault. So, uh, so Bryza, um, we're being asked: Is this Bryza from the famous Bryza collection? Yes. That's Tell us nice. about. Tell us about your famous Bryza collection, because maybe some of us don't know. Oh, I don't know. I pretty much must have been the guy that started the archiving all the software craze. Oh, no okay. was, everyone was just had their software to themselves, and I just started talking to people and said, we've got to start building this archive up so that it doesn't get lost, because if someone's PC crashes and they've got all of it stored, it's all gone. Right, right. Absolutely. So I thought, why not start it up, have an archive going so that we can preserve it? <clears throat> and what is the link to that? Is there, a, is there a website you want to share, you want to plug, let people know where it is? No, nah, I just gave it, I just uploaded it. I can't remember where I uploaded my collection to. And it's sitting in... Um, it's on the Gilliam, Cocoa Archive, I think. Major Gilliam or whatever his name is. Oh, Guillaume. Okay, so you're, so you're, yeah. you're pushing everything to the Cocoa Archive. Yeah, so my collection's all mixed up into that now. Oh, excellent, excellent. Still finding, I am still finding other software that's not in there yet. It's just getting it across to the PC because it's all copy protected stuff. And so you are, you are, uh, you're a guy who who's very familiar with the Coco and the and the software and the history of that machine. Yeah, since '86 Christmas. Oh wow, excellent. Yeah, I'm an old timer when it comes to the Kago Three, but. Never used the Cargo 1 or 2 yet. All right. Well, I mean, Cocoa 3 is not a bad machine to start with. You know, it's like uh, starting off with a sports car and not having to go through the old uh, station wagons, you know? So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just on the semi-graphic stuff. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, I don't mind that stuff. That looks pretty good when it's done properly. Hey, Verizon, do you, uh, do you use... Um Cocoa hardware, or you uh, use the uh, the virtual stuff? The... Oh, yeah. oh, there oh, you go. Good. It's a real <laughs> Cocoa. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and um, more sitting down there, mixed up with my train set and everything else. <laughs> you see your train sets? Yeah. Nice. No, it's good. It's cool. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Uh, and you say you actually know Nick Morentes in person? No, I've never met Nick, but I've I never met. The, oh, I don't know. It must be going on about ten years on in Facebook. No, okay. Yeah, Facebook. Um, Roger Taylor's old Coco Three website or whatever. Okay. Yep. 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 Maybe one of these days I'll be able to meet up with Nick if I'm up in Queensland. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody in Australia, you guys are all neighbors, right? So, yeah, we all know each other. <laughs> just next door to each yeah. other. <laughs> just put a note. Yeah, put a tiny continent. You right next door to him, yes. <laughs> put put a note on a boomerang, throw it to him. He'll catch it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. We'll spare you the shrimp on the Barbie jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we call it the prawn here. Prawn, yeah. Prawn, yeah. <laughs> the shrimp Paul Hogan stole. Yeah, right. That was an actual movie, right? They called Shrimp on the Barbie. Oh, I think there no was. Idea. I must yeah. have missed it. <laughs> yeah, it was it wasn't a crocodile done D movie, but it was some movie that was called that, I think. So Oh, I'm gonna have to look that one up. I love I love the I love the old commercials though. I don't know if you guys got them there, but here we had the for the Foster's beer. 
And, oh uh, yeah. How to speak Australian, right? And they just have something. <laughs> Foster's. And, and if I remember right, Foster's is the only kind of beer you wouldn't drink if you were in yeah. Australia. <laughs> uh, I used to drink that beer years ago. Yeah, is that like the Budweiser of Australia? It's just a common everyday beer. Yeah, it used to be pretty common back in the day. And yeah. then it just died out. Like Molson Canadian. It's like probably most people in Mexico don't drink Corona, you know. <laughs> if you if you believe That's the urban legends, the Corona bottles are filled with what they pee out, you know. So, <laughs> uh, VB Victoria Bitter. That's what you want. Oh, VB Victory Beer, I call it. No, VB will get you VD. Yeah. Well, Is I'm not. Just so that. you know, I've actually got a jar of Vegemite with my name on it. So Brian <laughs> Joyce had sent this to me, and I actually ate some of this crap. And it's—I uh, <laughs> don't know how the hell you guys do it. Don't make, don't, don't spread it on toast. You want to put it into uh, soups and sauce and things just to your. Yeah, hang, it sounds body. like sounds like Michael's falling down a flight of stairs right now. Is uh, <laughs> Michael? Are you okay? Hit the yeah. alert, hit your medical alert button. That's so just muted. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I fall and I can't get up. It was extremely unmuted. Michael will log in twice. <laughs> He's all over the place. Uh, if you like salt, you'd like Vegemite. Just don't spread it on toast and try to eat it. You know. It's not like, like uh, it's not like peanut butter. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had some. It's a, a little bit of knife and then spread it. You can't have it like jam. It's too thick. It's just no. We don't People even need that. It. I mean, does this stuff go bad? Because I opened it up a long time ago no. and I've not put it in the fridge. That stuff can last you years. Yeah. It's probably yeah. Fine. <laughs> See if it still smells like shit. It comes. It yeah. Comes <laughs> still, still smells like shit. So it has not lost that shit smell. So yeah, it's a. <laughs> Yeah, so it's in there. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. So what did we I miss today? How did it taste? Uh, very salty. Very salty and kind of bitter. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I didn't, like, gag or want to throw up or anything. It just wasn't, you know. It kind of looks like a peanut butter, but it's not, you know. So One of these days, we'll have to show you how to put it onto toast <laughs> and how you do it properly. Yeah, like a real thin layer. It's only a little, a bit of amount. Not even, uh, a, not even a centimeter worth of that stuff on a knife. Yeah. And you spread it in with the butter. That's oh, not a st- knife. This is a knife. It's, yeah. So, <laughs> no. you know, a centimeters worth anyway. Because yeah. I think you use different gauge over there, don't you? <laughs> Imperial or whatever you call it. Well, we can maybe do that as a charity fundraiser. For every dollar you donate, I'll eat another spoonful of Vegemite. <laughs> we're, we're, we're raising money to get Timmy a wheelchair, so <laughs> I'll eat this crap for charity. He'll eat it until he rage quits. <laughs> it's a viable alternative to listening to David Ladd, so. Uh, <laughs> Aww. Poor David. David Ladd. There he is. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? 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 Yeah. There you go. Is yeah, that the ch- box there on uh, Paul's screen? Yeah, we're. Oh, Paul, are we ready to? Are we ready to see your box, Paul? You guys are. If you guys are. If you guys are ready to see it. Um, okay. So, so this. Uh, you want to. You want to preface it, Stevie? Well, I'm just going to say that we're going to call this segment here Unboxing the Beast. Um, and then other than that, I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and, 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 and tell the story. And then we're going to see what's going on here. Sure. So uh, basically um, how I found this, uh, this lot of equipment, uh, when I got back from Tandy Assembly, um, I was just going through my if this, then that um uh, scripts and I just changed the scope and uh, wanted to search a little bit beyond um, you know the hundred mile or so radius that I had and uh, found this lot up in northern Vermont um, and the post had three pallets of uh, 
color computer equipment listed. Uh, everything from boxes and printers to um, uh, computers, you know, just stacked. And um, I contacted the person immediately. They said that they had another offer and I immediately um, uh, sent them a deposit uh, through PayPal just to hold it mm. and uh, made arrangements. Um, it was about a three and a half hour drive north for me, but um, the woman ended up having to come down uh, to my area in Southern New Hampshire for uh, visiting family. Um, so we uh, met last week and uh, she had her Highlander uh, just packed full of uh, all this gear. And um, I haven't gone through it other than the, uh, the computers and the couple of printers. Um, I've just kind of taken a quick look. So I don't even know myself all the pieces that are in the boxes. So uh, I was talking with Stevie and a few of the other folks uh, online the other night in Discord and uh, asked if maybe we wanted to do unboxing. Um, so there might be a little bit of Al Capone's vault here. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll see, but uh, I'm hoping that there's some goodies in here. Um, what I'm really hoping for is uh, to find any pieces that might not already be in the community or, um, you know, some real treasures. Um, but it seems like it's a pretty decent lot. And, uh, you know, we'll get into the boxes and see what's here. Right. Do you also want to mention the the part about where the guy was working on what was it a Lisp interpreter for the color computer, and they were kind of selling their software from home and everything? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I got to talk to him for a little bit, and um, you know they they had mentioned that uh, he had done a Lisp interpreter, um, and we talked a little bit about it. Uh, he, he couldn't recall. Uh, unfortunately, the gentleman, um, the reason why they were selling this lot was uh, the gentleman that had the collection is in the early stages of Alzheimer's and um, they were cleaning out the house and, um, you know, she had recycled a bunch of other electronic gear, but the uh, Coco, um, the co color computer was near and dear to his heart and what he really uh, loved developing on. Um, so they put this aside and they decided to sell it all as one lot. And uh, she was basically trying to recall as much as she could uh, about what he actually did. And the way that they explained it was that he developed a Lisp interpreter for the color computer. And I'm not sure which one it was. I believe there was one for OS 9. I believe Elite Software also had one. Um, and there might have been another one. I've been trying to research it um, to find out any additional information. I haven't found anything yet. But uh, she was saying how they used to bundle the software in baggies with documentation on cassette and disc. Um, and she couldn't recall the, uh, the magazines or the periodicals that they would advertise in. But that's how they um, that's how they sold the software. Cool. And maybe hopefully in, in one of these boxes, you might find a copy of that software or maybe one of the magazines that a clipping of what the uh, advertisement was like just to kind of bring it all home, you know. Yep. Um, that would be definitely very, very cool. But so, you, I just want to pause for one second here, too, because I'm not sure everybody appreciated what you started off by saying. You picked up three pallets of color computer goodness. Three pallets. I mean, this is like a warehouse order. <laughs> you know? This is like, that's insane, right? Three outside, pallets worth of retro. Outside of something like Coco Fest or... Uh, you know, like the auction table or something like that. I, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, this is definitely a once in a lifetime uh, find for me. Um, and you, you always hear people finding these, you know, the, you know, this grandmother, you know, was had an estate sale or whatever. And the, you know, the guy was collecting stuff and, but you're never the one that actually is the yeah. one that's lucky enough to, to, to get it. And um, I, I was lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time and checking at that right particular moment. Wow. Um, so, and, and I'm still in contact with her. We've been keeping in contact and email. We just kind of made this friendship. So yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping through that we might be able to learn more about this gentleman. Um, he sounded like, uh, you know, he was really into it. I mean, I mean, based on what I've seen so far, you know, how can you not be that passionate about the color computer? With yeah. So, much yeah. Gear? so so um, I kind of wanted to, you know, share this moment with the community. And um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. Uh, get the drum roll going. So uh, I got to I'm <laughs> on the other side of the room, and so what I'm going to do is switch mics, and hopefully you guys can hear me okay as I switch okay. the uh, camera mic. Sounds good. Sounds good. I see a big box with a Georgia Pacific lid on top of it right now. I can already see a Black Beauty joystick in there, and. Uh, 
something with some grill slots on it. But yeah, Rob Inman is saying like this could be like an Oprah moment, right? Everybody in the audience, look under your chairs, and you get an X-pad, and you get an X-pad, and X-pads <laughs> for everyone, right? So, uh, yeah. Sorry, can you guys uh, still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Paul. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just switched over to the other side of the room. All right, so this is the first box here. This is one of seven. Um, this one actually was just open, and uh, I just put the lid on it just to add to the suspense. Da multi pack, yes, Corbin <laughs> Dallas multi pack. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, this looks like it's the uh, thirty four. Yes. So it's the older style, but it's in white. Mm-hmm. And you're right, Steve. There's a bunch of uh, black beauties. Yeah. I don't recognize those joysticks anywhere. Got so, many a many a blister on those black beauties. There's a handful here. I think he modded this one with uh, LED. Not sure. Oh. See that? Cool. Um, I had seen where they had um, some people used to do that because it would tell you that your computer was still powered on. Oh, neat. So it's just pulling some voltage off of that. It's also starting to sound like uh, Mikey's uh, camera just a minute ago. So, yeah. That looks like a floppy drive there and controller, ribbon cable, whole nine inch. Look at that. Yep, what is this? Parallel. Serial to parallel converter. You getting excited, David? He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> And it's ah yes, I got one of those. Those are nice, the old Tandy sloppies. So, yeah. uh, this is the twenty six thirty twenty nine. Uh, so this is the second one. This is one that they, I believe, doesn't require a twelve volt. Okay. This is the first oh, five volt one. That looks. Yeah. Good. That's uh, right. They uh, used to have the analog pots in there, and I don't believe this one. I believe this is the digital where they had the, the lock loop. Yeah, on. they did away with some of the. You can't make that one uh, use the identity. Right. Uh, there's uh, pockets uh, on the Yeah. Hey, Bruce Moore just mentioned that the YouTube stream has failed for him. Uh, I'm on my PC. I'm still seeing YouTube, so I'm not sure if anybody's having a. Visibility I've got, issue. I've got YouTube uh, up on my big screen. Yeah, Cronus Lift. Um, I'm yeah. Sub yeah, I have no Sub problem. No, no problem here. Yeah, it's that uh, Canadian embargo that we got going on there. Um, <laughs> and uh, here we nice. go. Nice. 64K. God, that is clean. That is oh, that is okay. a beauty. Crikey. <laughs> Look at that thing there. That is a beauty. It's been upgraded by factory uh, for extended basic, so it originally just had uh, basic ROM in there, and it still has the factory seal on it, and it's got an address on here. So yeah, he was up by Burlington, Vermont. No, oh, neat. Might have uh, started with a virtual machine. It's the beauty of a machine there. So this is box one of seven. So we got a Coco, a multi pack, a floppy drive, and a stack of software. And a printer interface. And a printer a serial to parallel port interface. Now, how much would you pay? But wait, there's more. <laughs> so I already know what's in these two boxes because of the weight. They're okay. Oh. Oh, look at these, the binders. Yes, what is in that? Oh, it's color disc Edtasm. Look at those magazines. Yeah. It's all intact. Uh, this I'm definitely going to hold on to. Uh, that looks nice. That's in beauty condition right there. Yeah. Brand new stuff here. Oh, okay. Take uh, it. He's got some documentation here. Ooh. In the good old days, huh? Laser printing out the... Or Color. inkjet printing. Color fourth. Oh it text gosh. edit. This is him. This is the gentleman's name. I can't Bob, read it. Uh, Bob Hudson. Text Bob editor, Hudson. 6800. A text editor. Okay. I've seen that article before. This is the gentleman that um, sold me the gear. Oh, wow. So that's his article right there. So there's a bunch of different documentation here. All right, so we're already finding stuff. Nice. And you didn't have to dig very far. Man, you could have got that autographed. Yeah. Well, I, we're still in contact, so we might be able to touch base with him. What is that? 6809 Sigmon? Is that what that says? Sigmon. Yeah, it's a monitor. So is this all his software? I don't believe so. 
Okay. Probably some of his development tools for sure. Something from Radio Shack. What is that one with the Radio Shack uh, letterhead on it? Uh, cassette data files with the Terrace 80 color computer. Okay. So looks like it's in the documentation, the tech uh, bulletin. Wow. There's a, there's a bunch of it here. Coco Music, so you got some photocopy stuff. Yep. Tandy Tiger Ram. Ram. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When you get a chance, if there's things here that need to be scanned or you want to take some pictures and put them on Facebook for some bigger oh, color this, co is, this is Dennis's kits. Uh, oh, Dennis Kits is, huh? Yeah. Ah, so, uh, software music synthesizer. Look at that. Green Mountain Micro. Neat. And then yes. uh, underneath here, we've got uh, just stacks of magazines, huh? Color computer. It's, uh, oh, man, I remember that cover with the guys sitting there. I tell you what, this is this is better than finding a stack of old Playboys, man. This is this is some hot man, stuff. I remember that Hopefully they got some of the color computer news because there aren't many of those that got archived. This is uh, all rainbow as well, color computer. Wow. So this wow. is this is a full box. Yeah. You got oh, a small... I recognize the one with the dragon on the front. A small rainforest going on there. Yeah. It was like Christmas. Somewhere around that time. So I won't that pull been those out, but I'll go through those at some point. January? Yeah, some of that stuff might be worth scanning and uploading to the archive. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Anything I find that's not already there, I'll put in there. This is a treasure trove. Absolutely. And then uh, this here, we've got um, some more documentation. Barden's buffer. I remember that from Rainbow. Coco ads. What are these here? Oh, Coco ads. Like that looks like a paper. real newspaper there, huh? Yeah. Is that an early Rainbow magazine? OS no. nine user group, huh? Coco ads. What is this? Classifieds for the color computer? Yeah. Is there a, a is there a date, date on the front of that thing? Yeah, it's um, September of eighty five. Wow. 85. And there's a few of these here. I've oh, never good. seen that that type of uh, kind I, of I've newspaper seen, format. Yeah, I've never seen it either. They're trying to find dates with that or something. I'll have to go through those and see if we can't track down where those are from. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was advertised in uh, in one of the other magazines. So it's kind of like a classified, or just where you could. Was that an assembly dump of uh, some machine code or the source code, I guess you call it? It is, but it, it doesn't oh. look like 6809. This might be 68,000. Oh. 6800. Sorry. 6800. Uh, TSX. TSX. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. LDAA. Yeah. LDAA, LDAB. This is 6800. Ah, so it's like uh, the, the grandfather of the 6809, huh? or the, the father. So maybe this is, the listing is called Tifig, T-I-E-F-I-G. I've never heard of it. This might be his. Hmm. Man. Uh, color um, Computer Basic. Fig okay. might be a reference to Fig Fourth or something. I don't know. A lot of rainbows, huh? A lot of rainbows. Do you, yeah, do you, do you, do you have the rainbow where Madonna was on the cover of it? Oh, I'm thinking of a different magazine. Never mind. Uh. <laughs> There's uh, some 80 micros in here. 80 micro. Wow. And they all look to be in pretty good shape, too, huh? Yeah, they're in great shape. But you pick this up sight unseen, though, right? You just kind of like all rainbow. Wow. Yeah, he had no idea what were in the boxes. He knew he was getting a ton of computers, but you, you had no idea what was going to be in these boxes, right, Paul? No, I knew these were. I knew these were magazines. I mean, I lifted the lids, and that's it. Yeah, and you can tell by the weight, probably too, when you go to pick them up, right? So. Yep. So I've got to move these boxes. I'm going to grab a couple more. Yeah, no problem. Take your time. We're sitting here drooling. This is better than porn. 
<laughs> eBay is my porn site. It's like a like a mystery uh, mystery box. Yeah, yeah. We used to actually sell those at uh, at Radio Shack. A bunch of discontinued. Oh. oh, look what we got here. We got your cables. We got some doodaddies and some contraptions. A lot of cables. Okay. Like a deluxe yeah. joystick. Oh, yeah. that's a deluxe joystick. You haven't you haven't lived if you haven't acquired a box of adapters and doodads. Maybe uh, a high res joystick adapter. Yep. It's definitely a DVI. This is that's a the, oh, yeah, that's 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 the Coco DVI splitter, uh, Tandy. Yeah. Uh, high res joystick interface from Colorware. Yeah. yeah. And that might, is, looks like the Radio Shack one. Yep. This is Steve Bjork's. Uh, high resolution uh, joystick interface. It looks like a modem in there too. Uh, Max Ten Clicker from Colorware. Mm-hmm. Max Ten Clicker. What do you mean by a clicker? Was it like a button? Um, it Is was uh, probably a uh, foot switch or something like that that you could step on to hold down a button for certain functions on Max Ten. Gotta love that long cable there. It doesn't move. It's weird. It just goes right into the. I don't know. It's a five pin maybe port. It's cop, copy protection. Oh, maybe. Oh, that could be. You're right. Mm. That's the bigger device that they put in there, copy protection. Yeah, it's the copyright dongle, huh? Uh, what's FD- that black one? What's that? Oh, is that black one there? Floppy drive, is it? FD502. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, I didn't go that far. Uh, speech sound pack. Speech sound pack, the Radio Shack one. Yeah. A bunch of cassette cables. Cassette cables. Three, four. Oh, four of that, um, that graphics pack thing is a perfectly colored box, isn't it? Uh, some craft joysticks. Nice. The deluxe. Uh, some more Black Beauties. Beauty. The black Black Beauties. The Black <laughs> Yeah, a couple more deluxes. Yeah, yeah, wow. Oh, this looks like a couple boxes for the deluxe joysticks in there too, right? Right next to that modem thingy. Uh, these are full. These have joysticks in them too. Ah, in the box. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Is that a DC one. Is that a direct connect modem? That silver thing in the box there. Uh, Three hundred baud. Modem one. Yep. Nice. Oh, look at that thing there, huh? Yeah, Blazing fast speed. Yeah. <laughs> What's that paperwork here? Yeah. TRS eighty color primer, uh, computer primer part one. Huh. A bit by yeah. Tim Aarons, Jack Brown, and Hunter Scales. I don't recognize the name. Hmm. Huh. Little programming tutorial. Um. Oh, what is this? Dummy layout of color computer service manual. It looks like it's a draft. Oh. Oh, he must have collected a bunch of. Huh. It's it's the like yeah, service manual. But it's... Do you see anything like... about uh, two fifty six color mode or layer two <laughs> graphical? <laughs> 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 oh wait, that's a joystick. Uh, <laughs> yes, there it is, right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's pretty cool. Man. Um, so let's see. The books. Uh, extended Color Basic. Color Computer 2. OS 9 Level 2. I'll uh, put this aside for Nick. Uh, Dale L. Puckett. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, looks like these are more of the basic manuals. Yep. Desk system. Photocopy. Yeah, it's brown. Appliance and light controller. Where in the world is Carmen? Oh, there you go. Mm. Oh, do we have Rick on with us? Yeah, Rick's not here, but yeah, Shanghai. Nice. King's so Quest. Where, where's the Coco 3 with all the Coco 3 software? <laughs> uh, the Coco threes are behind me. Yeah, oh, okay. you got it was you got a total of twenty three machines. 
Oh, like wow. Ten of them <laughs> were ten, 10 of them were Coco 3s. Oh. You're making that up, right? No. No, he's not. Can we ask uh, the the price of the mystery package? I I'm keeping that um <laughs> okay. I, I don't want you guys to hate me even more. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Scumbag. He got it for free. Nineteen ninety nine plus shipping. Rescue on Fractalus. He's got a high guy in his collection. Yeah. So the disc box. Huh? Oh, the disc OS, filers. OS uh, nine level two operating system. Did you get any Use monitors? Of use. I got one monitor, Grant. It was a VJ monitor. Oh, cool. I think we have a Ron's Garage of the Northeast now. Yeah. Uh, not if my wife has anything to say about it. Yeah, that. right. <laughs> All right, hold on one more box. Got another box, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pallet full of Dino Wars cartridges. <laughs> 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 A roar. Come on, it's the, it's the Kai Kai version of VT. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dino Wars was good, though. ET was crap. I've heard people say they like ET. I was like, what? There's a plug and power in there. There's a story is behind why ET was so bad. The guy only had like five weeks to work on it. Oh, I'm sure. Yep. What have we got? Oh, power. oh wow! Oh, controller. That looks like one of those controllers. Yeah. That's. I see the white one. This is for the Model One and Model Three and color computer. Neat. Yeah, yeah. I remember those. Those were pretty cool. Uh, that looks uh, like the inside of a floppy or something, huh? Yep. Uh, FD five hundred two. Oh, the drives are not in there. Okay. Got the chassis and the power supply there, huh? Yeah. There's oh. something that has uh, 501. Bad. David Ladd, it's a, it's an undressed floppy. <laughs> Drop me after dark. It's got the disc in there. Uh, Rainbow March of 84. Wow. Yeah. Rainbow on disc. Those are some old bits. <laughs> Oh, wow. Is that, there's some fries in there? Because I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh, it's a nice. bag of floppies. It's a bag of floppies. Uh, game discs. It says game discs. Wow, there's, there's probably about 60 of them here. Wow. Games, games, games. Oh, Shanghai again. Shanghai. Mem tests, mem demo, ram disk. This is for performance per peripherals and color venture. Probably Coco 3 upgrade board or maybe a, a 64K upgrade for the one or two. Utility disks. We've still got these. a few games missing out of the archives. So I feel you've got them in that bunch there. Let's see, it. maybe. Mira, converter, speech systems. Hopefully some of these are still readable. I have a cryoflux, which I use for forensics, and uh, it does a pretty good job reading just about anything, so it should probably be good. Man. Looks like an OS9 manual in there. A couple of binders off to the side there. Yeah. Multi-view. Multi-view. Oh, Multi-view. Multi wow. What did that let you do exactly? Did you it see more than one <laughs> thing with it? <laughs> uh, was it an you. office suite? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it had uh, the windowing environment. Robot yeah. Odyssey. Oh, Robot Odyssey. Oh, wow. Yeah, just in there. So 
that's box. Oh, hey, you got an offer on the table here, Paul. Steve Powell says, I'll give you what you paid plus $20. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks for shipping? <laughs> hey, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? So. Man, what a collection, huh? Is the David Ladd centerfold in any of these magazines here? I think, uh, oh, cartridges. cartridges. We, we might get a Dino Wars yet. <laughs> Castle Orc, of Theragun. Orc 90. Oh, holy crap. Holy Orc. floppies. Orc 90. Orc 90 in the box. It looks to me like he absorbed a bunch of other people's collections. Uh, it probably, that's probably what happened. Uh, you guys want to see the cartridges? Yeah. Sure. Ooh. Typing Twitter. No time. Oh, my favorite. Did you visit Ron's garage or what? Rat Warrior. Warrior. That's good. I think that's a rampage in the corner there, isn't it? Yeah, Thexter. Thexter, yeah. Hey, the offer has just gone up to an extra $21 now, Paul. That rampage so. there? It is rampage. Mm -hmm. Smash rampage. And trash. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, another extra. 502. There's no shortage of disc controllers. No. Yeah. Robocopy. Robocop. Robocop. Yeah. Robocop. Yeah. Robocop. Springster. Springster. That's what we saw today. Uh, Ooh. More another, floppies. Oh. Another chassis. It's a gutted, gutted floppy chassis. Almost seems like a sin against nature. These are just the covers. FD-502, FD-501. Is David even... Even paying attention? Oh. No. Okay. Looks like another multi pack in there. Yeah. Corbin Dallas multi pack. Um, no, that's the angle one. Yeah. Item thirty one twenty four. Oh. So wait. What kind of manual is that off to the right there in the box? Modem one manual. Nice. To go with your modem one. Yeah. Complete set. Uh, it's a directory listing of stuff. Did writer Spinnaker software. One on one. One on one. Oh, good game. Oh, and there's the quick reference. Quick reference. Oh, I remember that. Man, that's What's, some incred incredible stuff here, Paul. Box and we got one more to go. One more box, but wait, there's more. It feels like Christmas. His uh, Lisp source code, but well, he's got all those things, so those printouts to go through. There might be something in there. We kind of got a quick gloss of those things. Ooh, Ooh. black beauties. Oh. I'm jealous. More of the Black Beauties. Okay, I think some three and a half. There's a Daggerath, Thorogad. Three and a half there, huh? Right but, uh, half inch. Oh, uh, that's a Tandy 1000. Mm -hmm. ah. Those are hard floppies. Dungeons of Daggerath and Color Baseball. Oh, yeah, color baseball. Color I did baseball. Like that. Uh... Oh, another color baseball. Oh. Can't have enough of that. That was a Dale Lair fan. Chess. chess. Uh, How about the nice game of chess? Oh, a mystery. The mystery yeah. game. Mystery oh. That's, the, that's, 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 the your, yeah, that's the original Black Ops right there. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pitfall. Super duper pitfall. pitfall right? Super pitfall. Crappy pitfall. Power. Plug and power. Yep. That's the only one I had seen. That can run the universe. 3D glasses. It's another appliance light controller. Appliance. Now, how did those things talk? Fighter 3D. Yeah. How did those plug and controller units talk to each other? Did they have like some type of RF? They used X10, X10. Over, over, over the your, the power in your house. Power. 
Okay, so it's it it like RF. like power line over Ethernet, or it's, like a, it's a, a Ethernet RF over signal. power. Yeah, Ethernet over your one ten power. Yeah. yeah. No, so this is basically uh, like Steve Bjork's uh, um, Warp Warp Fighter three D. Cool. A uh, bunch more discs. Wow. wow. I think Linville did some three D stuff too. Word processor files. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous, miscellaneous spell check. You got some work cut out for you to yeah, go through word, all those, all the paperwork and all the floppy drives. Yeah. Coco Max three, Coco Max three. Oh, there's a bunch of originals in here too. Uh, font disk. Coco Max three demo. I gave Coco a bunch of Coco Max stuff to um, the gal that did the uh, Coco newsletter. I don't know whatever happened to it after that. Max Sound Soundtrack Star Trek 128K by Gimmysoft. Mm. Up oh, there's the Max 10. Memorex. Memorex was my favorite program. <laughs> Max 10. Oh, uh, some love for Steve Bjork, Z89. Nice. Iron Forest by Dicom. Oh, wow. Look at Iron those flops. Forest. Oh, there's a Warp Fighter 3D that go with the glasses. Nice. I uh, can't read. Nova Soft Wild West. Scene disc. There's some more floppies in here. Wow. A time capsule. Yeah. No. This is incredible. Uh, Rocky's Boots. Pitfall 2. Oh, Rocky's Wood Boots. That, I, that. I didn't know that was in the Coco. Uh, rainbow, rainbow on disc. There's some nice labels on this rainbow on disc. Yeah, Desert Rider. One liners and two liners. Wasn't Desert Rider another Bjork? Uh, Flight yeah. Simulator 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. Desert Rider. Games. Ah, uh, Bash. Uh, another one by Steve Bjork. And that's the uh, predecessor to Arkanoid. Yeah. More Dicom products, man. Those oh, are nice oh, sleeves Dicom. they had. Medieval Madness. Uh, Gantlet 2. Warrior King by Sundog. Wow. Cool. Air Mix. Oh, oh, mix, huh? Mix. Nova Soft. There's the sleeve for that. Um, Wild West. Wow. wow. Right. Quite the collection. The, the value of everything on eBay for Coco related has just plummeted with all of this new supply. <laughs> CM8 owner's manual. No CM8 to go with it, though. You now know how to, now you can properly own your CM8, though. You've got the manual for it. I'm currently I'm currently <laughs> improperly owning mine. So. Yeah. Put all those OS9 manuals. Oh yeah. Uh, OS9 level two. OS9 level two. OS9 level two. So multi view and then the two operating systems. Some more manuals, manuals, manuals. Color math. Is somebody oh, having like... a blast with the new math tutor? <laughs> 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 That's what Timmy's doing at school, isn't it? Yeah. One kid's playing games, the other kid's playing math tutor. Yeah. That's what that's what Timmy's parents thinks he's My doing. Parents, yeah. They got me math tutor. <laughs> he's, he's blasting something, but it's not the math tutor. With P mode, <laughs> P mode four porn, is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's That's not a pixel. Timmy's oh. blasting his math tutor. Her name happens to be Trina. <laughs> All the artifacting. Oh. <laughs> the artifacting on that one, oh yeah. <laughs> I buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Why are her nipples orange? <laughs> Wow! I could yeah, they can be green and and replace m most of my collection, if not all of it. Oh, space wow. Century. Associated Space Century. Horley Bird Run. Horley Bird right. Run, starring Will Wheaton. I've never seen um, the <laughs> cool, whip. Whip. cool Whip. Cool Whip. Cool <laughs> Whip. Horley Bird Run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two. Oh my! All the. All the so much stuff. Scanning to do. 
Yeah. One of those manuals. Holy smokes. That makes some really good uh, kindling for fire. <laughs> Care, careful. I had a fire. It does make good yeah. kindling. Hey, Z89. Look at that. Z89. 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 Spectral oh Associates. Yes. Oh. Wow. There's just so Magic. much goodness in here. I remember the uh, ads for Warrior King. Yeah. There's Desert Rider. Is there a screenshot of that? Oh, yeah. What it look like? I'll go look on the website. Warrior King, was that That was like a really bad version of Rastan, right? Really slow. Something like that. Bad as far as just performance. I'm sure the graphics and stuff are okay. It's that one right there. We can't see it in the frame. The purple wizard thing. Uh, oh, Gantlet, oh, too. Gantlet. 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 That's how they pronounce it in Boston. You've been playing that Gantlet game? You gotta put a couple of quadras in that uh, Gantlet game over there. <laughs> we'll have some chowder. <laughs> That's pretty much it, guys. That's all I've That's amazing. Oh, so the question was is there a software in the OS 9 manual boxes? Did, did they put the discs in the boxes or did they, did they come separate? Uh, they used to come they in, were... the, they came in the box. In the I thought they were in the uh, side of the. What's what's the copyright date on that uh, manual, the OS nine manual? Nineteen eighty six. Didn't the discs come in plastic sleeves that sat yeah, they did. the rings? Yeah, they were in yeah. the Yeah. And yeah, they were at the was, back or like, something. There's like two versions of the OS nine manual. Eighty six was the first one, then I think they had an eighty seven. There's no discs in this one. Actually, they had an 88, and that's the best one. Yeah, they took out all the drive wire and floppies out of that one. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, Richard. You hit my keyboard. Right back at it. <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> 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 my keyboard. <laughs> There's no discs in this one. Okay, well maybe they maybe yeah, they weren't well, in that. Maybe they weren't in the binders. Maybe they were separate. Like in Stevie, little, uh... Stevie, you got a couple of new uh, door stops. <laughs> yeah. Or it's not a manual. No, the, the they were in the back of the manual. They probably just moved them to another. Yeah. Well, storage. I remember. The, I remember the plastic sleeves. Oh, I'll bet his main. Uh, main yeah, they're in they're plastic more. sleeves. But they probably removed them because those man the the binders were just way too small. Yeah. Jeez. So all of this stuff came with twenty three cocos. Yeah. He must have a casual fan. In every, in every cocoa from a club or something. There's the uh, the. Desk. <coughs> Okay, so there they put them in a little disk file filer floppy holder thingy yeah. to keep them protected. Yeah, from people like Steve. Protect them from David Ladd getting his DNA all over him. So uh. I don't know. There's no uh, <laughs> there's no pop star pilot in there. I'm not impressed. Stevie, David, Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. No. David Ladd. David Ladd saw all those floppies and had an Ed Tasm. So. <laughs> <laughs> And he was floppy no more. Yes. <laughs> he, he had a oh, wait, disc at that Oh, oh pop star pilot. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Are you now impressed I'm now? Impressed. <laughs> oh, impressive. Time warp. Someone tell Bruce. Oh, yeah. But does he have a boomerang? What? No boomerang. No boomerang. Huh? What about, is there a switcheroo in there by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> How current was he? <laughs> what about a wallaby? Yeah. Any wallaby in there? Hmm. How about an X pad? <laughs> oh, what's this here? What about oh, an RMA Coco from SDC? Uh, a Coco no. SDC? <laughs> wait, there's more. <laughs> I thought this guy had Alzheimer's. But wait, there's more. Uh. <laughs> That's not the case. That's an actual SDC, right? That's an actual SDC, yeah. That's an SDC, yeah. 
What's with the, the printed the case. There with the, I with think the Paul's, screw, Paul's screwing us right now. There's a little sleight of hand going on here at this yeah. point. Oh, uh, is he checking us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's probably, oh, a, probably a Forest of Doom uh, mug in there as well. Yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. Oh. Those things are a dime a dozen. Apparently, any, oh. apparently, any douchebag well, can get them. I see a copy. I see a copy of. Oh my god! Oh, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> well, I, 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 I have to go on the road. This guy. Is there a, a war show on the road? Slip from uh, Retro Innovations. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Sure. He like has there was a, box yeah. is a TARDIS. <laughs> There's a new version of uh, Rupert Rhythm in there. There's something yeah. else on the bottom of that box there, too. What's that? The... Oh, what's that? What is that? <laughs> I'm a coconut. Look at that. Wow. What's the date on that one? Is that 86, too? <laughs> <laughs> it's got the faulty guinea bug in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was great, Paul. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was something yeah, else in the bottom of that box. Yeah. Too. Now you can swing uh, and show us a picture of the stack of cocos. Yeah. Well, there's never... something else in the bottom of that box. There, there was another blue. Was that a manual or a blue box in the bottom of this thing? Uh, hang on one sec. Mm. Where were you grabbing the the mugs from? Was there something else below there? Oh, this was the Tom Mix binder for. Uh... Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Very good. What a collection. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Pull, pull those mugs out like that. That was cool. Hang on one sec. He must have taken and gotten rid of all the dead floppy drives and just kept the cases. 23 Cocos. That should be a well, the cases code. still could be useful. You 23 could put and some me. Gotex in them. 23 and me. It's like your DNA, right? It's the uh, <laughs> Tandy DNA. We could actually wow. do the 23 days of Coco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coco mm -hmm. Advent Calendar. Reveal one system per day. How many cereal ports could you put on 23 Cocos? Oh, a lot. <laughs> no, but you can count it down, you know, 23 Cocos, 21 uh, cartridges of uh, yeah. color baseball. If you put eight port MPIs <laughs> on all those, you'd be all set. Yeah, right. Eight and a manual it's for Lee. Or was it twelve? What's the max? Sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Somebody do the math. If we had twenty, if we had uh, twenty-three cocos with eight port MPIs and serial ports, what kind of mesh topology could we create by cross-connecting all these things? We could rule well, the world. Yeah, it's three hundred sixty-eight slots. You could uh, certainly yeah. dim the lights in the house. Yeah. <laughs> and certainly be a lot of bit banging. Oh, yeah. oh. oh that's what she said. Oh. Maybe you could surf, maybe you could surf the web with that. And David Ladd needs a diet Dr. Pepper after that last Ed Tasm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, now we're just staring at Paul's wood. Yeah, Paul's wood. <laughs> uh oh, here's another bin. Double crap. Uh oh. Sealed for freshness. Sealed for your protection. Oh, 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 oh the cocoa. Oh, oh, hold on. Cow. Yeah, I'll no, take one. Two. Thanks. I think hey, David Paul. Ladd's good. David's going to have multiple Ed Tasms tonight. So. <laughs> hey, Paul. So much. So many one gimmies. One of them has a tequila chip in it. I, I know one person in this group that uh, uh, had a Chet fire. Chet Simpson that says he has a boner stuff. in I, the uh, He probably liked chat. a Coco 2 and a Coco 3. Yeah, that would work. You're talking about Bill Pierce? All these need to be upgraded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, James? <laughs> yeah, I could use a Coco 3, but I can't afford it right now. Yeah. So, I think hey, I got you got Coco 3 a yet? So what's Paul doing all these anyway? There's a Coco 2. Right now he's just showing off. Uh, <laughs> oh, and look at how pretty. Oh, that one's got 512, 512 meg on it, huh? 
That's a Coco 2 with 512 megs on it. 512K. 512K, yeah, whatever. So you can All see right. the um, you can see the board down here um, a little bit. Uh, the add on board. It's under, it's under the keyboard. I, I haven't taken that. it apart yet. Yeah. I didn't know you could push them out to 512. It's um, yeah. it's a custom built. It's all wired wrap. I can see it, uh, all the wire in there. There was uh, that 128k board. Someone had a um, a stack chip version of that. They published. So you would what bank bank out the whole stack, or you could you could bank. Um, let's see, it was uh, I think it banked 32k at a time. Which is on three right there. Here we are. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They look pretty clean, too. Well, look at, all, look at all these Coco 3s. Holy crap. I'm having an Edtasm at this point that, here. So, that um, looks almost as good as the one I had. Yeah. It's pretty clean. It's never been used. One in a baggie, even. Yeah. Sealed for freshness. <laughs> this portion of After Dark brought to you by Viagra. <laughs> So you can have uh, plenty silver. of red There's a silver. Yeah, that was the one that was in the other box. Yeah, it's nice and shiny. What's so special about that F1 one that's in the bag? There was a couple more Coco ones in there. Yeah. Things are shiny. <laughs> this is shi oh, it's got some icons gen. above the keys. Yep, all the second gen ones. Oh, oh okay. A little, uh, it's a oh, little overlay yeah. there. Overlay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, allegedly, that's why the keys were let that way, to allow yeah. the overlays, right? Yeah, that's their story, and they're sticking to it. That's right. That's got the Tandy seal of uh, upgrade on it. Intact. That's like the second hymen on it right there. So. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Oi. <laughs> that Coco is the, the, 40, the real 40-year-old version. <laughs> it's not just David Ladd anymore. So. Uh, um, I think I qualify for the 50 by now. All uh, right. Uh, Mark Bosley says that J and R had a 512K kit for their Coco too. What's anybody going to do with that much memory? Nobody needs more than 64K, do they? Well, <laughs> I don't know what you'd do with it on a Coco 1 or 2. Yeah, oh, I can sure. think of a lot of things. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, whatever. Uh oh, Paul's just uh, censored the view from us now. We can't see what's going on. The suspense is killing us. <laughs> Did you guys want to if see it, more? <laughs> if it comes back on and we're, you're naked, no. <laughs> don't tease. What, you think I'm creepy like that David Lyde dude? <laughs> <laughs> Not taking Thanks a lot. Da David prefers using peanut butter. <laughs> we don't want to see your uh, forest of doom. <laughs> 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 Forest of Doom. What happened to her? Did we lose our friend? Mm. Paul Fiscarelli, do you copy? <laughs> going once, going twice. Well, that was good. That was good, man. Looks like he made his connection bounced. No, I'm still here. Oh, there he is. Yeah, that definitely is a once in a lifetime haul. <laughs> or find, however you want to call it. Wow, oh, I, I can't wait to go through it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not a single one of those Cocos is like yellowed or, you know, nasty or anything. The, the guy definitely took good care of his stuff. Yeah, it was all packed well. Cables all wrapped and everything. Oh. Very neat. So congratulations on that one. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope his list list uh, force code turns up. Yeah, I hope so too. And maybe as, as I was going through the documentation there, maybe it was fourth, and maybe she was confused. Um, fourth and lisp or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, was, there was that ta fig or whatever ti fig, and I'm wondering if that wasn't a reference to fig fourth. Yeah, it'd well, it'd be great to know to know more about this guy uh, if we can do some research. And I know he's, um, you know, not uh, doing well health wise, but maybe we can 
publicize his uh, what he's done in his past. Yeah, yeah, let yeah, the, for uh, sure. I would love to do that. Let the legend live on. Yeah, I'm hoping I hoping to find some more details um, in the discs or any of that documentation that I just went through quickly with you guys. Yeah, um, you so. know how um, people with Alzheimer's though do occasionally remember stuff, and he's going to be like one day, "Where's my cocoa stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, woman. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it's got to be it's got to be heartbreaking on so many levels, you know, to be having to deal with that, that t deterioration and, you know, the whole nine yards and then having to part with. Obviously, this guy was, um, you know, very passionate about the, the computer and we can just see there's so many things in that collection that there are so many just gems there, you know that um it's got to be heartbreaking too to, to kind of get rid of all that stuff you've been you know accumulating your whole life you know yeah i, I can't even i can't even begin to imagine what they're going through i mean it's got to be i i could just see it in in her face you know how how hard it was for her you know just trying to talk about it and have him trying to recall memories and yeah you know, that they you know she was having you know a very tough time with that it yeah tough to see yeah well, it's it's you know it's it's in good hands and and this stuff will get cataloged and, and archived and and all that kind of stuff and so it will, it will be preserved and um, you know hopefully a cocoa or two will will make their way into good homes for people who need them things like that when you're done um, doing what you got to do with them and everything so that'd be kind of cool. Well, there's a guy in the Tandy group that wants a Kai guy. Yeah, yeah, and like, a, like what Brian was saying, what, who was it, the one who had, the, I mean, we've had a few people that have had either fires or floods and stuff like that that have lost their homes and lost a few things like that, too, so um, you know, there might be a few people in the community that, you know, would definitely enjoy having a chance to get something back again, too, so you just never know where where where, where this story will continue to go, but that's really cool. Yep, there's plenty of boys. So are you going to be selling this stuff on eBay then, or what's the, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to keep it all, but, uh, part of this for me is, um, I, and I told her this when I, when I met her last week, um, if this, if this went to somebody else, uh, part of me was just, I was kind of scared to think what would have happened to it if somebody was just going to, you know, junk it or just, you know, throw away things that they didn't even understand and just right. try to pawn everything off on eBay. Yeah. So for me, the big thing was trying to learn some of the history behind it. And I know some of it now, but I, there's a lot more unanswered questions and I want to sure. find out more. So sure. um, knowing what, you know, is in the collection now and, you know, who owned it is, you know, a big part of it for me. So um, yeah, to, the other part is, you know, finding people that do want these systems and making sure that they do find good homes because right, right, I, right. I, I've been on this weird kick lately for the last couple of years and, you know, people joke around about being a collector or hoarder or whatnot. But to me, the thought of, you know, even one computer just being thrown away, you know, you hear, hear stories, people saying, Oh, I needed a power cord. So I cut it off the back of this computer and I threw the mm -hmm. computer away. And so, so that's just, you know, these things aren't going to be around forever and, you know, trying to preserve as many as possible um, and get those into, you know, homes of people that really want them is, you know, extremely important to me. So. Mm -hmm. Killing me, you saying that because I was watching this video and I had a lot of that stuff as a teenager. Yeah, and I got rid of it all. Yep. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so hearing you say that, the thought of throwing away, like, yeah, I was, I was one of those idiots. That, uh, yeah. Every time, uh, every time a retro system makes its way to a landfill, a unicorn loses its horn. So I'm sure we really have oh, yeah. to stop, break the cycle. So and Timmy doesn't get his wheelchair either. And Timmy doesn't get his wheelchair. Butterfly loses its wings. You know, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah, you gotta a friend break of mine the cycle. That, a friend of mine that I grew up with, um, he had a color computer too, and a multi pack, and some games and things like that. And uh, I called him up here not too long ago, and I said, uh, "What'd you ever do with that stuff?" I said, uh, "Do you mess around with it? Do you do you still have it buried in a closet?" And he told me that about five years ago, his parents called him up because they had it in their house, and he didn't want it anymore. So uh, yeah, they they, went, they threw it went, away. It went to the trash. Yep. They thought uh, it had no, no value. So, parents. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, Nothing is well, definitely. 
Well, that's just the thing, though. I mean, this is stuff from, you know, uh, you know, from back in the 80s. And, you know, people say, you know, I mean, we, we've talked about this, obviously, on the show before, too. People are like, what are you doing with that old computer before? You can't do anything with it. You can't go yeah, on the exactly. Internet with it. You can't do this with it. And it's like they, they don't understand, you know, uh, you know, how what it means to us and uh, and uh, what we like to do with them. And, you know, so it's, it's all answer, from your point of view. The answer can be summarized in three words. OS9. Okay. Now, <laughs> now you've taken a pot shot. <laughs> I am excited about OS9 and what two megs can do. In the 6.3 or not. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna computing run. was more fun back then. Like everything is just so. You got like a massive memory, massive speed. Like it's fun to see what you can do with limited resources, right? Absolutely, yeah. Like it was more fun back then. Well, you need hundreds of, of people now to to make a game, and it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's so yeah. immersive yeah. And, and amazing, but at the same time. There are those uh, simple games that that's why all these retro systems are selling. And that's why yeah. we've got uh, Bejeweled and all of these types of casual games. People like 2D uh, simplicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Too bad they can't make a retro system like, the, like, the, like they do with the Super Nintendo and all that with a Coco. What, what do you mean? mean? Like, uh, like an Atari Flash, like a Coco Flash? Yeah, flash. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh. If you have it done and stuff, and you take it to Tandy and <laughs> what's left yeah. of them, it's, there is yeah. no Tandy, is there? <laughs> oh, I don't know who bought it. But you know what? Same you know, <laughs> we were talking. I don't know how many people were on that when we were talking the other night about that recording. They they recently republished, a, and it might, it might have been Chet Simpson who did it, but the, the recording of the Coco Three Roundtable when you know the Coco Three was first released, and they had the people from Radio Shack talking and. Um, Things like that, and uh, was it Barry Thompson or whatever his name was that did a lot of talking about the machine? And you know, one of the questions that people in the roundtable were asking would be, you know, why, well, how hard would it be to get you know a Rainbow magazine in a Radio Shack store? And you know, they kind of tap dance around the answer, but it's like, well, if we had one magazine, we'd have to have them all, and you know, uh, because of the way our systems work, we can't get anything out. It takes us two months to get something to the store. But if you thought about it, I mean, how uh, technology did not change that fast from 81 to 86, right? So if you had a two-month-old Rainbow magazine, would you say, oh, this is old, this is crap, who so wants silly. this, right? You know I mean, what I mean? That's where I found, that's where I found my Rainbow at the uh, Manchester, Connecticut uh, Radio Shack store. So the whole two-month oh. excuse is so, was so lame because, it, it, you know, Rainbow's, oh. Rainbow is still timeless today. So if it was a month old, it, it was, was still on useful. It was uh, Safeway shelves. Yeah, so uh, that was the only way you you would find it in a, a, a store. Yeah, I, I don't know how I found out about it originally, but you know, obviously you end up you end up getting the uh, subscription, so you get it better. Well, Rainbow made the sin, you know, had the sin of actually selling software that wasn't available on the radio Radio Shack store. Right, right, but yeah, honestly, that. Uh, as much as Radio Shack wants to sell software, they should they, they should be happy that the you know third party software could help sell the hardware so if you weren't buying all radio shack software if you at least bought radio shack machines to run it which was non-negotiable that still helps right. so yeah well radio shack made a lot of uh poor decisions in that area you know it turns out you know if you embrace that sort of thing it, it, it winds up you know it can it can be profitable to you they're they're thinking in terms of Mine, 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 mine. Yeah, you know, and, by us. Well, and, and they were already on their way down, if you think about it, because uh, they only had, what, five to seven years left of selling computers at all uh, by the time the Coco 3 came out. Yep. So they, they had already kind of seeded that um, leadership position yep. and were on their way out. And they, yeah. Well, their biggest mistake was they stopped making machines where they were doing some of the innovation. They were all oh, just... Right. Rebadged sharp or rebadged, you know, whatever. Actually, if they had rebadged the sharp uh, X68, the X68000, that would have been amazing. Uh, but you're right. No, I know what you're what you're saying. And and by the time they got around to uh, calling something a sensation, you knew it was desperate. <laughs> uh, 
But didn't all the offshoot computers kind of die, die around that time? Like Atari, you had the Atari ST, you had the Coco 3, you had the Amiga, and, they all and the, Mac, died. the Mac was having problems, and yeah, everything because of all yeah. the the it's all IBM and Apple. Like the Mac. early 90s was when the PCs really started to take over because, I mean, let's face it, the IBM PC came out in 1980, but all throughout the 80s, most people did not have computers. Uh, but by the time the early 90s got there, having a computer be became more and more of a, a more normalized thing. The Internet. Uh, yeah, and right, when the inter especially when the Internet started that really. Yeah, it was the only way you could get on the Internet. And now you've got phones. The other mm -hmm. thing is the PCs right. actually that was when the Pinium uh, came 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 into to uh, uh, being, and also we went from 16 bit to 32 bit uh, architecture. Mm -hmm. So that was the yeah. other big factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, future Cocos could have uh, supported the 68,000 series. It sounds like a plug for uh, Force of Doom. What if we could go back in time, alter the course of history? All right. So, um, good stuff. All right. Well, I think we've uh, we've achieved our goal here. We got to see Paul's collection. We got to see, we get to see the big box, the big hall. We got to see the unboxing of the beast. That was awesome, uh, Paul. That was that was uh, that was really good stuff. And he opened it up and he took it out. Yeah, the, yeah. The East Coast version of Ron's garage. Yeah. Right. Hey, we have just been joined by Diego. How are you, Diego? Good evening to you. How's it going? Good. So it's like midnight for you right now. Uh, one a.m. One a.m. Yeah, I can't keep up with your with your time. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome, awesome. So did you see did you see Paul's stuff, Diego? Or did we lose uh, Diego still here? Did you see it? Uh, no, no. I just joined. I just okay. got home. Okay. All right, let's do it again. Yeah. yeah Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul, line them all up. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> cool stuff. Cool stuff. Well, thanks for sharing, Paul. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for. Yeah, uh, I think me he, had, he had at least one of everything. Yeah. If you imagine it was in that collection. Yeah. <laughs> could, could, couldn't have gone to a nicer guy. No, absolutely. Unless it was Nick Marotta. So. Oh yeah, that'd make up for me getting rid of mine. Yeah, and Nick Marota, have you completely translated the words to Coco do for us yet? No, I, I can't understand them. All I get, all I got was Donna Sock ah. in the bag. Can you can you play a little bit of it on your your ukulele for us? Can you play a little Nick Marota's <laughs> rendition of uh, Le Coco do for us? Uh not right now. I'd have to fuck at the chords. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nick. <laughs> this is live. We'll do it live. Come on. We'll fix it in post. So. <laughs> Uh, le coco do. All right. Well, anybody got anything they wanna they wanna say before we we wrap things up here? Wake yeah. up, David. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, Bryza, when are we gonna have you on again? We do this usually on Saturdays, but when we do it on Saturdays, when Nick Morentes joins us, it's like four a.m. for him because we do it at like two p.m. Oh, our time. Right. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I was going to ask you what time you'd normally do it. Yeah. But, yeah, if you, I mean, if, if this time works for you, you're welcome to join us on our After Darks, too, because we, we do these fairly regularly. Pretty so. much every week. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, at this yeah. time, yeah, that's not a problem. I'll be yeah. in more often. Yeah, well, you, you, know, you know how to reach us now. you got the phone number, so you're welcome to call in any time. So. <laughs> uh, it's and toll free. And uh, you can join <laughs> us on Discord as well. Yeah. Are you on the Discord server? That's where we do our. That's where we got all our text chats going on. No, he's gonna have to. Someone will have to add me to it. All right. Can we can we put the link to Discord and uh, do we have the Discord link somewhere? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller, Bueller. Let me see if I can find it and I'll put uh, it in the. Uh, I can't even connect to Discord at the moment. I don't know what's going okay. on. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can find it and I'll post it. I'll post the link in. Uh, what? I'm on my phone. It's a pain in the rum from mobile to post the. Link. There we go. I found it. I found it. I'll just I'll put it in the um, I'll put it in the Zoom chat, and I'll also throw it out there on the um, on the ch chat for uh, click people. A, click on the chat button on the bottom, and it'll bring up the chat bar on the side. Yep. And I put it out there on the tube of view as well. So good times. Tube of view. Yeah. So if you put if you click on the chat bubble. Hey. 
That will um, bring open the chat box, and you should be able to see it there. You've got a tube of you. The tube of you. The tube of us. Right? So, um, yeah. So who's been in the live chat with us today? Let's make sure Tim Franklin has been here, Jason Downs, Chet Simpson, Rob Inman, Steve Powell, Jason Downs, Mark Bosley, Retro Innovations, Mikey has been here, uh, Mark Bosley, Perry Dueck, um, Mikey, yeah. So, yeah, thank you all for being here in, in the live chat. Thank you, for everybody who's been on the panel. Obviously, a big thanks to Paul Fiscarelli for allowing us to unveil that. As we all saw most of that for the first time live on the air, breaking news. This just in. Um, we've had the we've been graced by the presence of Nick Marota. Nick Marota. Nick Marota has been in the house, and we had another Aussie. We 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 uh you know we have to keep up the tradition of having an Aussie on the show. So so Bryce has been with us, and in, in the the stunt double for Nick Marentes has been here with us today, and uh, Diego joined us. We got Brian Weasler and James Diffendapter. Uh, Diffendapter. Woo -woo. Op optimizer. Hey, celebrity Optimizer has been with us. And, and Sir David Ladd, Lord of the Floppies, Duke of Data, um, been with us. David, we can't thank you enough. Um, we've had Mr. Dumpster Fire himself, Richard Lorbieski of Boyson Technologies, <laughs> been here with us. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. And Chet Simpson has been banging away on coding. Has uh, just been listening to us in the background. Uh, thanks for being here, Chet. And John Lowry has been here. And thank you. You're too kind. Thank you. And Rob Inman has been here. And Paulie Walnuts Fiscarelli has been here with his 17 parcels of freaking technology there. Uh, <laughs> awesome freaking stuff. Uh, Good stuff, good stuff. Um, all right, so parting thoughts. Anybody got anything you want to say to the folks at home? Uh, words of wisdom, free advice, words of caution. And yeah, yeah. Don't, don't add uh, Bryza to your friends list on Facebook because you're never going to get to talk to him anyway because he's always in Facebook jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you, uh, is it you, Tony Palm, on there too? No, who's the I one who's always... That. Who's you're in Facebook jail? Is that what you said? There's somebody who always talks about I'm in Facebook jail. What's yeah, your name? Right. What's your name on Facebook? Brian Br Palmer. Oh, Brian Palmer. Oh, okay, Brian Palmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You're the one who's always saying I get, uh, I get, I get put in Facebook jail. All right. So I'm, I'm just now yeah. connecting all the dots, the names to the, to the he, face. He, I've never seen your face before, so. Uh, he, he spends more time in Facebook jail than he, than he spends on, on the Facebook. No, no time off for good behavior. <laughs> no, nah, I've tried. But at least you get to you get to hit the weights while you're in jail, right? So you should be all pumped up, right? So <laughs> I feel like an idiot this whole time. I was not putting those twos and twos together there. So Do you get conjugal visits at least. <laughs> <Conjugal> <laughs> <visits>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, Only yeah. through the bars. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think about office space. So if we get as in the ass person, <laughs> you, you, you don't want a conjugal visit from a woman named Davida Ladd by any chance. So yeah. <laughs> Stevie, really? If it looks like if, if she looks like Uncle Fester with a wig, stay away. So. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent. All right. Uh, excellent. Help you. We've lost the family friendly tag. Oh, yeah. One question for Bryza Are you a, a creator or a user? Oh, jeez. I mean, do you do you, uh, are you, you do programming or are you just uh, use? Go, go. Programming. Um, I used to hack the crap out of the gimme to try and blow it up. He, he was searching for the, for the missing mode. Oh, that for a little bit, but then I got bored of that, and I thought, no, I want to try and see if I can get that 210 mode to, like, get it semi-stable in a sense, which I ended up managing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I got it to... And when we did finally figure out how to do it, it meant I had to send the IRQ into FE69 and send it into La La Land specifically for that one mode. 
and it worked. It seemed to stabilise it because it was the only time the, that um, La La Land actually affected a mode. Hmm. Yeah, created a 320 by 14 vertical line screen. 14? 320 by 14? Uh, 320 by 400. Oh, 400. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doubled the uh, vertical resolution in it. Ah, there you go. You'd get a, you'd get a slight flickering because what it was doing, uh, I asked Sox about it one day and he'd come up with a theory that it might have been um, using, because I'd have to first create a 320 by normal screen, 16 color mode. Then I'd hit the 210, pack that one in, and set it to the 256 color bytes. In other words, setting it to 256 mode if it was in there. And that created a weird screen where it actually stretched the screen down and it tightened up all the pixels together. So it was really weird. But it seemed to work. So after that, I stopped doing programming. <laughs> I did what I set out to do. You sent, yeah, you sent the thing into the future. So, yeah, I just, uh, I wanted to see if I could do something with that 210 instead of it going endlessly scrolling through the memory. I actually got it to sit there and actually display a picture. Cool, cool. It was, it's only good enough for like a demo picture. That's all you could ever really use it for because it uses two screens to activate it. So you can't get 60 frames per, per second out of it. If you try to use it for a game, it just be pointless. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Steve Bjork just joined us as we're getting ready to go into the closing ceremony. How are you, Steve? <laughs> yeah, but I just had to log in. That comment about, oh, we had such limited resources. We're so much f having so much fun doing it. Trust me, I'm banging the head against the wall of the Coco when I was developing those games. And I kept on saying, gee, if I just had a little bit more power, just 10%. Yeah. I never said it was fun. I said it was <laughs> challenging. Yeah. Apparently, Nick Murdoch didn't have to. He didn't have yeah. to bang his head. So, what's your problem, Steve? He's not complaining. <laughs> yeah, I started off in cobalt, so I did some time in the. Uh, well, you know, it's, that's the reason why I was so excited when the Coco Three came out. I'm going, I can run at double speed. Hey, Drew, Steve, I've got five times more graphics memory to deal with. Uh, uh, Paul Fiscarelli had a lot of your software in there. He had Warp Fighter 3D, he had Z89, um, you know, some... Uh, uh, there was, was even Bash in there. Yeah, yeah Bash, Bash was, was in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Warp Fighter and then, 3D with the glasses. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Those were some some really cool rare rare gems right there. And, of course, all the Tandy stuff like uh, Desert Rider and, and everything else, Pit, Super Pitfall. Was there. No audio spectrum analyzer, though. No. No. Yeah. It's a sin. It is that a is sin. Quite a shame. Gotta yeah. love audio spectrum analyzer. All the bouncing bars. I do have the cartridge somewhere though. <laughs> or at least he didn't have a color computer artist in that uh OS9. Oh. <laughs> I think oh. I think I bought that. that you know, that show. program was supposed to be a OS9 version of MicroPainter, a bitmap graphic yeah. system. But no, Mark Siegel had to have it as a vector art graphics program. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark Probably, Overholzer just joined us. Yes, of all the products I did for Tandy, it was the most miserably selling product. Well, I actually think I have a copy of it here. It was in some collection I bought. <laughs> yeah, you're, you and about five other people bought it. <laughs> oh, he had one of your he had one of your high res joysticks in there too. Yeah, my, mine was the twenty dollar box of all sorts of stuff on eBay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just yeah it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Steve, you're right. I didn't say it was fun, but I guess it was fun in thinking back on it as opposed it to. It was well. It's fun to play the games <laughs> without having to know what it took to make them, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it, it you know back true back on back in the day it was always like we're hitting the wall we're hitting the wall uh the atari was like okay we want to do this game no we have some limitation of sprites because sprites are either uh a color or they're transparent essentially and if you want to have a multicolor sprite you got to use multiple multiple versions together and oh it every i just remember all those meetings we'd have and it was like no, we can't do this. No, we can't do that. And it was very little of what we could do. Was there ever a, 
uh, discussion of putting a 68,000 plus a 6809 in the Coco 3 or doing anything uh, unusual with the processor? Nope. No. I, I, w I would say that there might have been some stuff uh, talked about that for the, um, the actual people that were behind the Coco product. But the problem is anytime that they would mention their mouths about out of their mouths about something more powerful that could compete with the Tandy 1000, it was shot down. Once the, mm. once everybody started seeing um, IBM compatible computers and dollar signs, that was the end of it. Uh, no. Let's put it this way. Up on the wall, they could put a bit of software in the same space that a... Um, Disk Edtasm would be for whatever it sold for. Was it fifty or sixty dollars? They could put a two or three hundred dollar word processor up for up there for the Tandy One Thousand. Which one do you think the Radio Shack stores want to sell? Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we were lucky to get what we got. Yeah. Considering the Model One, the Coco. They they are the ones that paved the way for everything else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a uh, 6K of uh, ROM space left that got wasted with that uh, Easter egg picture that could have all been spaced. 6K oh. family language is quite a bit. You know, do you know how many new functions they could have added? Well, the entire MC10 ROM is 8K, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you, so. you do know they were told to put random garbage in there, right? Right. Yep. Well, that digital picture qualifies random as random garbage. garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's not executable code, so why not yeah. put the picture in? Why I heard Jenny was not too happy about that, though. Well, why yeah, but but see, the thing is, it had to be random data because people were using uh, scanning the ROM for random numbers. And if you had, a, you know, if you just filled it up with zeros, those programs wouldn't work that well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the picture serves as a random source of data for, for you know, generating random information, you know, random data. That's what I just said. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. Well, we are we are to that special part of the evening. This is Jim Brain's favorite part of the show, where we start to um, <laughs> play the closing closing credits. But uh, so we we have another one of your customers, Steve Bjork, fifty five Ramius says uh, somewhere buried in my garage is the audio spectrum cartridge. So another another happy customer out there. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, we don't. We there is such a thing as too much of a mediocre thing, and. Um, Fish and visitors smell after three days or something like that. So we're going to go mm -hmm. ahead and wrap up this episode. But I can't thank again Paul Fiscarelli quite enough and our panel of Nick Morota and Riza and Diego and Brian and Paul Fiscarelli and David Ladd and Rob Inman and John Lowry and James Diffendaffer, Chet Simpson, Richard Lorbieski, and now Steve Bjork and I have been Grant Leedy at your service. <laughs> and we're going to play us out now with a new track off of Sting's album here. So here we go. Hello. <laughs> All right. What is this to play us what out? What does that mean to play? What does that out? mean to play us out? All right, everybody. If you've never heard David Ladd have an Ed Tassel, it sounds like oh yeah. Nick Marota, Nick Marota, Nick Marota in the house. Baba Booey. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. All right, another one's in the can. Thank you all. I'm going to press the button. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Oh, good night, everyone. Oh, ew. I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I